Hi guys, um, so basically, yeah, I'm about to go live with um, David. So once he dials in, I'll just add him to the call. But for in the meantime, I'm playing songs, you know, just to so. I don't wanna miss it, but I'm not a man. Make a body good, okay? I don't wanna miss it. I'm not gonna do this. Nobody, 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 nobody. Yes, yes, that's me, DJ Bale in the beauty. Hi David. Hi Ben. I see your head. <laughs> How's it going now? Good, good, good. Hello everyone. All right. Um. So I mean, we'll, we'll get right into it. Uh, no long box. Yeah. Basically, we're here, and I guess a bunch of people are also here to learn about you know journalism and money. So what usually happens is um, a lot of people, including me, run away from journalism because, you know, we're scared of being poor. Including you know, me. I ran away from journalism because of money, yes. Yeah, it's so like, we're scared of being poor and it's just like, how, how do we um, handle such a crucial aspect of our existence as human beings, you know? Somebody needs to hold the society to some standard, right? And how do we yes. balance that with other things that are going on? In the world so i'll just start with um a question um so guys in case you don't know who david is um, welcome to welcome to the live um so basically david is someone that has done journalism done editing done media he's a media consultant and all of that and you know at the time when david was still writing for like um ventures africa i think my, i was just i think was it 2015 when you were writing for ventures africa 2016 was when i started okay. ventures africa I was there till 2018. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool, 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 cool. All right, if you have questions, you guys can drop it in the comment section and then we'll um, attend to them. So I think my first my first question for you will be, you know, how did you start and what three things contributed to your success? <sighs> success, I... I don't... I, 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 won't, I, I won't go for that. Person, Only with there, there are a lot of things... No, because there were a lot of things I wanted to do. I just couldn't do because of the restraints. There's just there, there are too many restraints around doing good journalism in Nigeria, and I figured, um, I, at some point, I figured this is not something I want to be doing long term. So I just okay. decided to move into a field where I won't have to worry about money, but I can always come back. To journalism in one way or the other to continue what I was doing before I left. So right. yes, th that's just that's just how I see it, and I think I have unfinished business, a lot of unfinished business. I've been having conversations with people, and I realize that I have a lot of unfinished business. So if this um, pandemic had not happened at this time, we would be talking about a. A possible, not a full return because I'm not leaving my job for any reason. Um, but we'll be talking about possible. But we'll be talking about a concession of sorts that would allow me to continue to do the type of journalism I always wanted to do while not having to worry about um, who is going to be paid or, or what. So, what do you look at? What do you look at? Um, journalism, you know, going through. Um, so I think journalism's biggest problem in Nigeria is the biggest problem of any industry that is not oil and gas, and that's the okay. that, um, Nigeria. Nigeria is a poor country, right? That's that's the that's the foundation for everything. 
if you are doing business in Nigeria, you know that Nigeria is a poor company, co- country. And if you want to gain some sort of financial success, you either have to um, cater to a very small audience with large pockets, or okay. you, cater, you cater to a, a wide audience that now attracts people with large pockets. My point is, you cannot, you cannot do successful journalism in Nigeria targeting the pockets of everyday people, right? So you can't do mass market stuff. You cannot do, you cannot do mass market journalism targeting the pockets of your audience. And right. this is because so journalism is, um, yes. Um, so journalism is not high on people's scale of preference, right? I mean, you know how you know, economics needs um, come in hierarchies. Journalism or the need for journalism is not high on most people's um, um, list. It's not high on their pyramid of needs, right? It's further down. People have to, or further up, I don't know, people have to feed, they have to find shelter, they have to yeah. find good jobs, they have to take care of their families, they have to take care of themselves before they now start thinking about paying for journalism. So it's either you're targeting the people that actually have the money to pay, right? So that's the very, very niche uh, group of people, which is what Business Day does. Business Day targets the people that have money to pay. Or yeah. you, go the, you go the route of, um, let's say, polls, right? You target a very wide audience, and then yeah. using that reach that you've gathered, you can now attract advertisers that have money to spend. So that's another thing. Then the third thing is that um, traditional media is still um, the biggest attractor or the biggest magnet for uh, marketing communication spend in Nigeria. Digital media can make all the noise it wants to make. In the end, it's radio and TV that most of the people who have money to spend, they spend their money on. Then some some people who are in quotes walk or moving with the times can now spend their money on digital. But digital is not yeah. the first place people will look to spend their money on. It's often the second or third or fourth you think, option. You think we will get to the point where there's digital first, or are there even any other crimes that eventually, are digital? Aspects? Eventually, 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 right when um, the audience, the market has matured. But right now, the market is not mature enough. For the for journalism generally, and I'm saying journalism because there are certain aspects of media that are cashing out. They are cashing yeah. out. For example, entertainment media is cashing out because entertainment and escapist content are high on people's scale of preference. People are fine paying for concerts. People are fine paying for parties um, or party um, content. Or people are fine paying for porn. People are fine paying yeah. for um, you know all of these things that just get their mind off the off of the hardship around them. But if you talk about journalism itself, it's not the first thing anybody would want to pay for. Or most people would want right. to pay for. So we have to look at it from that aspect. So 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 like recently I was I was talking about, you know, um salaries, right? And you know, I had seen a tweet from you earlier about, you know, the range of what like journalists sort of earns like eighty to one fifty K. Yeah, Bro, like at the start, it's very it's very low. My first yeah, ever like, journalism so, job was forty K. <laughs> I was only 40k. Oh my, my, first, my first journalism job, I was only 40k. So, and what were you turning out? <laughs> I was turning out three articles every day. I was 15 articles a week. 15 times 4 is 60. I was doing 60 articles a month for 40k. Bro, there's no way content can be good with that kind of frequency and exactly. that kind of. Speed. Exactly. So, I mean, I had a few ideas for how I think journalism, digital journalism especially, Journalism in general in Nigeria can be more financially buoyant. Um, I think um, it's two things. Um, differentiation is really important, right? You have to invest a lot in differentiation. And two, you ha- there has to be a lot of consolidation and downsizing. I do not think that there is a large enough market for the amount of media houses that we have in Nigeria. That is why you see that talent is spread thin. In, in, in the first place, there's even not enough talent. There's not enough talent. There's not enough journalistic talent. There's not enough business management talent. Because all the people with the business management acumen would rather work for in work for companies or work in industries that can pay them very well, not in journalism. Journalism is not going to pay you. It will give you some yeah. form of clout. Some form of clout yeah. which you can now layer other things on. But if you're looking yeah. for actual good money, 
and you have business skills. Journalism or media is not the first, or digital media is not the first thing you think about. So I think there has to be a lot of consolidation. Um, I think five a day for 50k. Whoa. My guy, <laughs> let me tell you, I was up, I was up at 25k. Months, just so you know. 120 a month. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. So, yeah, um, some people were doing 300 a month. So there's, a place, there's a place that they did 10 at schools a day. That's Jesus. And, yeah, so that's like almost 300 articles a month. And how much are they paying them? Maybe 100, 150. So there's no money in it. Um, so where was I before? So yeah, um, consolidation means that um, yeah. less media houses cater to the current available um, audience um, set that we have. And then companies invest a lot in differentiation. There is not a lot of differentiation in digital media right now. Right? If you go to all the news platforms and all the blogs, everything looks the same. It's very few um, media, media houses that are actually investing in exclusive or original content. And that's the only way, or series, because I think series, like investing a lot in series, is how you are going to gain attention consistently and draw people's attention to you and be able to hold that attention, which I think Zikoko is doing very well. I don't know yeah. about the financial aspect of your business. Why? Well, they're supposed to. Um, they they are investing a lot in differentiation, and that um, is going well for them. Um, market share wise, they are getting a lot of. Which I don't know how much that is translating into financial. Oh, so I don't know. I don't have their their figures, but I suspect there has been some form of improvement from where they were before in the past. Because of the amount of investment that they are making into differentiation, um, stairs, stairs business is also doing okay. that as well with the newsletter. Let's let's look at let's look at um, even trying to define this thing, right? So sometimes on my bio, I, I don't want to write. A about um. You know, you can't collect money from who you're writing about. I just always do bias and stuff like that. So yeah, I think that's bullshit, by the way. But <laughs> yeah, man, like so, it's bullshit. I've, I've, I've tried to sort of. Um, I, I, so the way I do my own is is, is somewhat different, right? I, I just have a section called Spotlight. Um, it's like the partnership stuff, and I know a lot of media houses also do that. So in Spotlight is you're paying me for the time to look deep into what you're doing, and you know, publish it all. What's journalism? What's blogging? What's reporting? Like, what, what do they mean? Who is a reporter? Who is a journalist? Who is a blogger? A reporter is someone who reports um, news stories um, okay. for newspapers or TV or radio. Journalism itself is the profession, right, of uh, of, uh, of telling stories or reporting. Um, reporting things that the public may not be privy to, right? Um, usually, usually journalism deals with informing and educating, right? So you're informing people uh, about things that they would, they normally do not know about, and you're, you're educating them. And um, in some ways, journalism is telling truth to power, right? So you hold um, the people... I mean, society works with power structures, so you hold people in positions of power accountable to whomever yeah. their um, stakeholders or the other stakeholders, stakeholders are. So that's essentially what journalism is. It's the profession of reporting and um, revealing to the audience or to citizens things that they normally do not know. So, so for, for, what, what options are there to, to media houses? Are there, are there even media houses that focus on only journalism? Because I know most people always have another vertical that sort of forms the journalism. Or like, what, what, what monetization options are there for like journalists or media houses that do journalism? So, if we are talking about um, digital, I think okay. it's very difficult. I think it's very difficult to just run a journalism arm, except it is a an international publication that has a steady stream of income from advertising and subscription and maybe merchandising and a few other things. But if you're talking about like pure journal journalism, telling stories and then 
getting maybe ads for that. Um, not many publications are doing that. Some some have agencies on the side, and some are yeah. and some are um, yeah the business B to a business A where the business A could be a research arm, could be a PR agency, yeah. could be a full service creative agency. It's usually agency work that is funding the journalism as well, and then and then they supplement. Um, the supplement revenue or the supplement the revenue of the agency side with advertising um, and money. So essentially, they try to control. They try to control um, all the aspects of the news flow. So yeah. let me let me use examples. So some Nigerian publications that have been able to, or some Nigerian companies that have been able to do this. I won't say successfully because. In, I don't think there's any digital media company that is doing it to the level that they would want. Because a lot of people did not, they did not pay well and they did not turn out great quality stories frequently. Yeah. So I wouldn't I wouldn't call anybody success, but people that are doing well enough, um, I would think about um ring ring it as as um ring ring it what's his pulse now that used to be um, ring it Africa and digital publishing. Um, I would talk about Black House um, Media Group, the guys that run yeah. the Nets.ng. Yeah. Um, yes, um, I would talk about um, Business Day. Uh, I think Business Day they supplements the uh, revenue with events and some special reports. Anyway, Business Day has the opportunity of proximity to... They are, they are, they are close to... Um, the people at the top, so they have they have that favoritism for, going for them. I won't say favoritism, but that's going for them. I don't know if the yeah. local goes through the creative agency and media platform model. I don't think so. I think it is. Um, I think it is um, integrated into it. So I'm talking about a company that has, and um, I'm responding to Timmy um, Omi, Omi's um, comments. I'm talking about companies that have. Yeah. That have their own agency. The agency and the media publication are separate. It's not that the media publication is doing agency work. Do you understand? They are separate. So they have that agency that they are using to now fund the um, um, media publication, the other side of it. So, yeah. Um, so, uh, sorry. Cool. Okay, okay, cool. So, I mean, like, there's this thing in the news cycle that I've sort of battled with. Not really battled. You know how with PR agencies, right? Yeah. They get all the money, right? So they sign up clients, um, and then they just find a bunch of news outlets and then push the content to them. And you know, in the way we think about social media, where we're saying, "Oh, okay, yeah, that's if, um, I hope you works. <laughs> you know, we're saying like if um. YouTube, for instance, you know, YouTube could have decided that um, they were not going to pay creators, right? And then I think the industry just sort of grew to the point where they had to pay people that are creating the content for their platform. Yes. Right? That model is slightly different from PR agencies. But yes. I'm saying, yes. imagine if yes. PR agencies had um, some sort of relationships with news houses they frequent or news houses they usually push stuff to. To say that, oh, okay, there can be some ref share at some point. I mean, of course, it's capitalism, so everybody is just thinking about how can I maximize the money. They do. Um, okay, so they, they pay. It's just this, not this. structured. They do. Yes, now. Okay. Uh, it's Nigeria. You, are you going to get your story on somebody's platform? Bro? You pay somebody now. It's just not, it's just not, nobody really talks about it, but now so it they happen. So it's you so it happen. So can you Google ask put your stories on platforms? Yes, there are people that ask. Yes, that's what uh, sponsored content is now. That's what sponsored content is. Do you understand? That's so, so, so this content, right? I, I mean, I, I feel you, but I think also, again, your asking power grows as you grow, right, as a media house, because... You can't um, just fashion. No. Yeah, 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 because they'll probably just fashion you. Do you think that, is there any shame? Is there, like, any shame in asking? Because it will look like... Um, you know, because everybody tries to be smart, you know? 
um, please publish if you think it's good for your audience or we think it's good for your audience. I like it. I don't really care about your this thing, but it's a tricky yeah. stuff. Yeah. So typically, what I would do is um, I would then take the story around because PR people like. PR people, so first thing is first, because I'm now on the side of the PR people, so I understand. First of all, PR people yeah. like journalists who are not proactive. And a lot of Nigerian journalists are not proactive. You send them press releases and they publish it as is and expect you. I wrote the press release eh, and yeah. sent to you to put on your platform. And you want me to pay you for something that you did not even edit. So what I would do is... Um, or this is what I used to do because I was the editor, I was in charge of monetization. It was my responsibility if the publication was mo making money or not. And the only time I came to yeah. rant about um, PR agencies not wanting to pay for this thing on Twitter, what I would do is I would say, okay, we've gotten your press release, right? Nice. Um, we will publish it all, but this is what we are going to do um, um, after publishing it. We are going to do a deeper story. Um, we're going to dig deeper, we're going to do blah, 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 blah. We shall try to add some creative um, elements to it to say these are different ways that we can help your clients. So what you're now doing in essence is you're extending um, the reputation or you're enhancing the reputation of the PR person that has sent you the press release. So by offering that, the PR person will now take that back to their client and say, okay, this is what this media house is, is offering. It looks good on the PR I hope it's not my internet, please. Hey. Pardon me. So it looks good. It looks good that um, it looks good that you, the PR person, you're now approaching your client with this um, list of options that the publication. It's not your idea. Don't forget, it's not the PR person's idea. It is the journalist's idea. Yeah. But yeah. it looks good on the PR person. So the journalist is more likely to get a bigger cut, right, of the, or some extension of the budget from the clients because they have shown initiative. But the problem that Nigerian journalists, digital journalists and traditional journalists have, they don't think outside the box. It is what you give them. And from even my experience, sometimes I send press releases to some of these people and you can see errors. You get like little, little childish mistakes that people should not be making. Like, you went to school, you should not be making this mistake. You can hear the pain in my voice. You went to school, you shouldn't be making this mistake. But somebody that went to school and has a degree in journalism, this person has, this person says they've been practicing journalism for 20 years, will still be making some really, really silly mistakes. So it's both a, it's both a question of competence. Whether you are starting out or you've been in this business for long, are you competent enough to think outside the box, right? Are you aware enough of yeah. the environment that you are working in that the money in this environment is scarce? And you are not the first choice when people want to spend money. Except when it comes to relationship with the government. That's another thing that you now have to think about. The government is the biggest spender on advertising yeah. in Nigeria. Nobody spends more than many, the government. Especially so many industries. They have the exactly. exactly. Especially, ex especially when it comes to election period. That's when media houses cash out big time. In fact, that's the best time to pitch. You understand? So media houses even structured their monetization strategy in Nigeria around election cycles. So we make this good enough, big enough amount of money to, first of all, we make this big enough, uh, we make this plan to, first of all, make a large enough amount of money that can take us a certain extent and also give yeah. us enough clout, again, clout and reach so that other people will notice us because we've done this work for this particular politician or this political group. Yeah. They will now notice us and want to spend with us. Do you understand? Yeah. So that's how it works in Nigeria. You should, you've worked hard to build your platform, right? You've worked hard to reach. I mean, we were doing um, um, almost 2 million every month, views every month. Do you understand? For a business public, like business inside that was the and that was just for one market. We were the, you know, like for a business publication, that was a lot. So yeah. we're doing those numbers. I can't invest so much uh, into building my team, into getting this amount of stories, getting this level of reach. For me to now give you free, for you to now come free. and you want to publish your press release on my platform for free, who will you be? But I also understand yeah. that 
the press release that you are sharing with me, I'm not the one who wrote it. So I will have to now meet you in the middle and say, okay, this is what I'm offering you, right? I will publish your press release, no problem. I will tweak it to fit my house style. But at the same time, this is what you are going to tell your clients for me that this is what I want. You get it. Yeah. And then you see that the relationship is symbiotic. That's why you find that there are some PR people that have some journalists at their party. Not yeah. just because yeah. they publish their stories, but because these people publish their stories in a certain way. Do you understand? That's the monetization aspect yep. of it. Yep. Then there is a different conversation. Yes. There is a different conversation that you need to have if your journalism is activism journalism or political journalism where you need to maintain a certain degree of objectivity. That is a yep. that conversation entirely that we might not even be able to exhaust if we <laughs> on this um, live chat. So maybe that's something that we can talk about another time. But okay. just know that it is impossible for you to go and approach somebody um, as a PR person and then expect them to publish your story for free. At the same time, it doesn't make sense as a journalist for you to just ask a PR person to drop a certain, a, an exorbitant amount of money on your, on your, uh, for your publication because you said, um, because you sent them a press release or something like that. It doesn't make any sense. So let's, let's move, let's move from the house. I think this is my last question, right? Now, if you had to speak to the journalist as a person, right, what, what are shown, um, chances of value either now or in the future, right? So I don't know if that chance is in maybe going to a bigger brand or international brand. So maybe you've written for a local brand and, you know, your long-term strategy is to get snapped up by maybe New York, West Africa, Bureau, or to, yeah. you know, get called to leave BBC or something. So, like, as a journalist, right, what are you, what, what can be a strategic um, career plan? That's number one. And number two, what, what other skills can you add to yourself, you know, to sort of complement um, what you currently have? Juwon is asking if journalism is for sale. Yes. <laughs> Juwon, there is no money in journalism. It is for sale. You know. <laughs> you know now. Come on, you know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, you know this thing. You have to. You're being realistic. Okay, so for a journalist, um, if you are, if you are just starting out, I think your goal should always be to transcend Nigeria. And that goal, you can achieve that goal in different ways, right? You can achieve that goal of transcending Nigeria. You either work for a publication that actually cares, an international publication that actually cares about. Um, African stories or the quality of African stories or you build your own local publication enough to be um, respected by foreign um, let me give two examples one is um, so if you work for a platform like I don't want to mention names but there are two types of international platforms I don't want to mention names so that nobody will watch this and assume it there are two types of international platforms operating in Nigeria. There are those that actually care about what is happening in Nigeria and they invest a lot, not marginal funds, they invest a lot into telling stories that happen here in Nigeria. Right? Yeah. You can tell you can tell from the from the quality of their stories. But there are also those that are ex that, that are in Nigeria because there is a lot of warning from the big corporations. Again, big corporations in Nigeria spend a shitload of money on advertising. You you can tell the frequency. They spend a lot of money on advertising. You can tell. I won't mention names, but there are some publications that are in Nigeria just because there is money in Nigeria. So they just set up a a, a bureau, maybe a West Africa bureau or one kind of thing, in quotes. And they have that person to be managing it. And, and they are, we either use we either use contract staff or we just find like people share to in publishing. Yes. The stories are not in depth, too, but they are just publishing. So there are two types of publications like that. So you have to now choose if who you want to work for. Yeah, yes. it's up to you to decide who you want to work for. But there are also publications that legit are concerned about. Um, I think a publication like um, writers. Um, they are really concerned about what goes on in Nigeria because Reuters is a newswire, so it favors their business model to be concerned. It's not just advertising; they are actually concerned about breaking stories. I think Bloomberg too. Do you understand? Yeah. Those are two that quickly come to mind. Then 
there is the other aspect of you as a Nigerian um, journalist um, being able to work for international, write for international publications. One person I know that does this very well is Eromo, right? Eromo right. is Eromo is like the gold standard for um, freelance journalism in Nigeria, right? Although I think he's no longer freelance, but he's, he's a gold standard essentially for freelance because he did so well writing for local publications, Eromo Ebedule, and then he transcended Nigeria. Do you understand? Yeah. And moved yeah. To international. So. International publications want to do something about Nigeria. They commission a wrong. Do you understand? And there are so many other journalists that, that are like that. It's not the only one. There are so many other, other journalists that are like that. So it's either you are going through that um, from that aspect of you are freelancing and you, you start from local publications and then you move up the ladder to international publications, which is something we used to do at Ventures Africa. We had um, partnerships with right. like foreign publications. Some of our journalists would write for. Um, those for the foreign publications and that was extra income for us. Uh, so that was ah, mad, mad, mad. So instead of letting the journalists do it on your business, you offer it. Exactly. So we offer our journalists as okay, this then the the publication will not pay company. So that was just yeah. the, that's just is another model some some people use. Then I'll just quickly okay. talk about let me just quickly talk about um political and investigative journalism. So that usually works if the if there is a fund right like this premium okay. times premium times has an investigative journalism fund that is basically beefed up by grants so journalists pay they get paid they have their regular desk job where they report to masters and get paid they don't get paid a lot yeah yeah it's those can imagine. investigative stories it's those investigative stories that are funded by the investigative journalism fund that they can now really, really dig into because those funds now handle your travel, they handle your DM, everything, all the resources that you need to come up with an exclusive story. That's why you see that Premium Times comes up with an exclusive and it shakes, it shakes everywhere. The whole of Nigeria stands still because of that one story. Do you understand? And those stories don't come out frequently because they take a lot of yep. money to produce. So if you want to do something like that, you have to be intentional about how you're going to set up the fund. Who is putting money into the fund? Is this person anonymous? Because, again, you can have no political um, affiliations if you're going, you going to go down that route because you're going to offend a lot of people. Right? You, yeah. cannot, reveal the name, you cannot reveal the names of your donors. Yeah. You yeah. don't want anybody coming after them with some political, some form of political assassination. Do you understand? So these are really things that you have to think about. It's, it's a wide net. If you want to go into journalism, if you want to go into media, it's the wide net. There's so many things that you have to consider. I agree with you. And I think um, even just to keep in, I think there are adjacent industries um, for people that are already in journalism and they feel like, um, you know, there's no money here, right? Yeah. Um, I think, and that's part of some of the things you also did. You know, you moved into a more communications role. Um, imagine if you also try to get a role in content marketing because, you know, you sort of, affected your SEO um, yeah. optimization strategies. Yeah. So I, I, I think on, on, on a um, closing note, my own advice to people that want to do journalism or people that are already doing journalism as human beings would be, of course, like as much as possible, learn almost all there is to learn in storytelling, content marketing, um, reporting and all of that. And as you go along, there'll be opportunities and even if there are no opportunities, there are um, other um, adjacent industries that you can start courting and start saying, see, um, I'm happy to come and be your head of comms or head of marketing. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, thank which you. Is what bro, I did. Any final words? Yeah? Um, I say which is what I did. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, man. I don't have any final... I mean, I've, it's pretty much it. If you're going to go into journalism, right, um, I think you would... In the long run, you will do better for yourself if you are already thinking about the money. You are not going to be naive to think that yeah. somehow telling great stories. I mean, except you don't care about, except you don't care about those things. There are people that who, that genuinely do not care about. <coughs> do you want to know what I mean? <laughs> know what I mean. <laughs> so there are people that genuinely do not care about um, um, money. Yes, yes. Fact checking. Fact checking is sponsored by big 
is sponsored by big companies. So all those Facebook people that care about all these things. Fact checking is there's a lot yeah, of money. That means, yeah. That's true. Yeah, that's it. That's yeah. very true. So fact checking too is something. But if you're thinking, if you're thinking about money, you have to start thinking about it from the beginning, right? Um, I mean, if you're going to do journalism long term, then you have to figure out um, how to monetize your journalism. If not, you do you do nice work, right? People will clap for you, but you will sleep hungry. Do you want yeah. that? Yeah. All right. So thank you very much. One thing I have to add. I'm really sorry. There is another model of journalism that I think people should explore more. And that is one man or two man um, um, teams. Um, Osiramen started it with um, the subtext, right? Where, um, especially blogging, but in another form, where you're just the you're the lone journalist in your own publication, yeah. in your own media house, and that means you don't have to worry about um, overhead costs. You don't have to worry about who you are paying salary. That's why blogger salary is very successful. A lot of bloggers and influencers are very successful, right? Because you don't have to worry about paying somebody's salary. But the moment you want to now corporatize your journalism and start building a company around it, you will find out like in like AGT that oh shit, this is a different ball game entirely. This is not just me take them um, yeah. taking low barrier um, low barriers to entry stories and just publishing them on a blog. Now I actually have to think about it overhead cost, paying this person, paying that person, and all of that. So one-man or two-man journalism business is, is something that I think we should, journalists should explore and yeah. figure out ways to standardize. I think there is a lot of progress to be made from that. And just, 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 I, I think that, that, that very sensitive one, um, and I think we should even take this conversation out of here because, you know, like Loki, that have been blog could have been a one-man journalism. Yes, do you know? Um, yes, and you know there was that confusion as to should we do that I've been blog as just Benjamin Dada writing about it, or should we do that I've been blog and like in the KG corporatizing kind of stuff? Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So I mean, well, I, I'm saying that oh, figuring it out kind of thing, but I'm sure like I'll keep everyone posted on how how it all goes. But thank yeah. you very much, David, for your time and. Um, I look forward to doing this sometime with you know some other people and just let's hear thoughts on journalism and money in, in, in this space. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, guys. All right. Yeah. Thank Bye. you. Bye.